tried the hard stuff, but I had to go at all. All right, uh, Roger here. We have the 19th of April, 2020, and uh, it's LS3 wiring harness Sunday. So I'll show you that in just a second, but um, the reason I threw that video in there, that was actually uh, me and uh, my buddy uh, in Coale, Italy. Those are the beach races that we go to every year, two years in a row right now. And obviously uh, it's probably gonna be canceled for this year. And uh, just wanted to show that prior to the COVID, and the corona situation. Everybody hang in there, stay safe, and uh, I'll just show you in a follow-up video number nine right now. So, where we're at is this actually is gonna be converted over to the, uh, the air conditioning system. I'm gonna go down my list here in just a second, but uh, what I've got over here is the actual wiring harness that came out of the, uh, the Plymouth. This is the LS3 wiring harness from Connect and Cruise, and this over here is the actual automatic transmission piece and how these things talk to each other is basically the bulkhead connector pretty simple connection these this actually goes to the transmission over here and it's fairly simple because you just have to basically feed this through the firewall depending on where you mount your computers and it tells you map sensor um, this is actually in order right here so this is the even side of the motor you can't really mess that up and you plug them up uh, electronic throttle control is right here it's uh, basically a plug and play. Uh, the only dilemma I have, and it's a pain in the butt, is I gotta figure out where I put the actual fuse block and where I actually put the main computer for the LS motor. Someplace way up underneath there. And let me show you the dilemma that I'm having is this thing is pretty well packed in there tight right now because I went ahead and got my air conditioning mounted now and I got my flashlight sitting right here so you can see my air, my AC is in and it is tight up in here right now. So I can't put any of the controllers on this side. So I've decided to put them right over here where the air conditioning control goes right here. So that's my problem, but I'll overcome it and figure it out. I gotta make a couple of brackets. And that's what I, I went ahead and pulled this out right here because this has to go in here and I have to make sure I have enough room. And then I'm gonna wiggle my cables through the hole I already have down here, which is right there. And then I'll build a little nice bracket cutoff plate and put it down here. I don't like drilling holes in uh, the stuff that I've put up here right now. Uh, you can see here's where all my AC lines, high pressure, low pressure, and uh, heat to and from the air conditioning unit come out put that in there and here's my mounting holes on the back side the screws and there's one right over there pretty simple stuff right now I'm not gonna spend too much time on little I'll talk about this a little bit later on but got the vent hose hooked up got a couple little custom brackets I made right here looking pretty pretty and then I'll explain those a little bit later on anyway I'll come over here to my little checkoff list pretty proud about this I'll grab my little marker and cut on the light. So here we go. Install air conditioner. Yes sir, Bob. Knock that one out today. I'm gonna sit here, eh, I can't really call the installer wiring harness. It's actually in there, but I haven't got all the connections made yet. Uh, cut panel, upholstery cover, not quite done yet. Coming down here, emergency brake. 
completely done. Side exhaust fab. I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark on that one because I can actually crank it up and I've got it running right now. Run brake lines, completely knocked out. Trailer hitch later on. Brake booster vacuum. I did that the other day. Those are those little 15, 20, 30 minute projects, but if you wait and don't account for them, you try to crank the motor up and you get to the end. I'm mounting the ECU today, transmission ECU also today. Transmission dipstick. I just had to clock that correctly. I did that yesterday. Mount hood, grill, fenders, bumpers, nope. Bleed brakes, nope, but I'm ready to. Rear oil, nope. QTB, nope. Rear taillight install. Uh, air intake tubing filter, yes sir. Knocked that one out when that part showed up from Summit Racing. And check engine trans oil, mount driver side mirror, yep. Oh, real quick. I'll show you that, that was pretty cool. Because... There was a hole right here. I just basically welded up, bonded it, and then I moved this one over a solid probably six inches because I don't have the vent window to contend with anymore. So that actually turned out pretty good. And got my little marker here. Got that one. Coil pack remount. I'll show you that one in just a second. And tablet wiring. I had to make sure that didn't bind up. And then flip it over here. Horns are mounted and done. I just got to put the wiring to them. Got that one. Rear USB charger, haven't got that. Weld installed door trim, visor support bracket. Haven't done that one yet either. And fuel line power, need to knock that one out. But I'll show you one more little thing right here that it's some minor things, but it's the stuff that actually is a little bit of fun to do. So what I knocked out here is this is, it looks simple, but it looks stock. So what I had to do is, since this is so close right here, and I've actually did my little dimpling right here, painted it, I just had to basically take this coal pack and move it in about an, I'd say probably about a half an inch, five eighths of an inch, and basically clears right here. And this obviously, because that's my 10 millimeter, here's what they usually look like. It's a little small stuff like that that takes up the time, but fabrication is fun, but anyway. I'm gonna shut off this video right now and I'll add a couple of other pieces in there to it. Like I said, uh, the beach races in Italy, there'll be an article in a thing called Car Custom Culture, Car Culture Custom in the USA. I actually wrote the article, we got some great pictures in there. So look for it at your local newsstands or wherever you pick up your publications at and you'll see the Carlet European Road Trip Beach Races with the article or something like that's entitled. But anyway, uh, take care, stay safe, bye-bye. All right, uh, today is a uh, brake line day. Uh, we got about 5.15 in the evening. Sun is still shining over here, so here's how I do this. I go down to my local hardware store, and I pick myself regular old brake line. This is the part number right here, and I get it in various different lengths and everything. Uh, and I always keep it on the shelf, whatever I don't use. Now, what you can also use is this connecting stuff on the end here, these connecting joiners, so you can piece the stuff together, and there's absolutely no difference. That's if you don't have the professional way of doing things, which is a, a nice double flaring tool on the end. I bought a couple from Harbor Freight and uh, cheapies offline, and they just don't work. Now, some of my German friends actually have really good ones, and they work absolutely great, but if you don't have one, you don't want to invest the, a good one probably is about 150, 200 bucks, uh, then do this route right here. So what can I show you right here? Uh, as far as bending material, here's how I do it. Uh, get yourself a brake line, for example, right here. And what I do is I have to get myself a small screwdriver and uh, just enough to get on the inside of this thing. And you want to push this thing probably about the width of whatever nut you have on it because you can't turn it any tighter than that. Then grab whatever diameter, this happens to be an inch right here, or this is probably like 11 sixteenths, and put your thumb on here and bend around here like this and you can actually turn it around there like this. Now, what's important here is don't do it like I do a lot of times, is leave this on this side of the bend because then it won't clear the corner obviously and you gotta unscrew it. But uh, if you do it that way, you get this little markings right here. You don't have those on here. And you can actually pull those off with your thumbnail or get yourself some paint thinner and just rub that stuff off here. It's nice to keep this original nice clean line on here. So that's one trick. 
Uh, again, not right or wrong, that's just the way I've been doing it. Grab yourself some, uh, some masking tape, get yourself a pair of pliers like this right here, cover the ends of them off, and then grab your GoPro camera and head this direction. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, I do have the, the right tool to go around the corners with, but if it's the wrong diameter, you can't use it. Uh, and this stuff is pretty easily pliable. Just main thing is you don't want to get a kink into it. So let me open this up right now. I believe the sun is shining. And what I'm going to show you here is, here's what I use these pliers for right here. You see how these lines kind of like have a nice, easy, nice aesthetic look to them? Right here, I'm a little bit off. What you want to do, and I can only demo this right now because I need two hands to do this, is you put those pair of nice pliers in here. The only thing you're doing is you stop from scoring them. And you push it, and you move it all the way down the line, and you just basically wiggle them so they're sitting right nice and adjacent to each other. Now this one I haven't done yet, just got lucky right up here, this looks pretty decent. But I'll do it all the way down this corner piece back here. And you can see this is my rear line right here. I've got my little cool around here, and the people ask why that is. That's supposed to take up the, the stress on the line going to the body mount and the frame. And there's a little bit of cushion body mounts in between there. So it's supposed to take up that little wiggle room right there. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and put it in there. And you can see all my other lines coming for the front and left and right. I've got it way, way down here in the corner. So here's what my driver's side looks like. Nice, neat, easy bends. This one comes from the other end. Obviously, you want to keep it away from heat or any moving parts. And you can see it is heading way, way down there on the bottom. And that little cross piece in there, I got a little snug mount on there to stop that thing from rattling. Obviously, you don't want to have any kind of places where it's rubbing against the body or the frame or anything. And definitely keep it away from the heat of the exhaust manifold, which is right here. And definitely keep it away from any moving parts. And this is the steering right here. You can see it. It's sitting right up in here, but I'm very, very clear of that. And I'll move this up a little bit, and I'll clean these up with this little method I was just telling you about and tighten those things together. Now, what I've went ahead and done here, this is my proportioning valve, and you can see that piece of stainless steel that was on my bench over there. I went ahead right here and fabricated myself a little line, and that's basically going to hold my proportioning valve, and I polished it up a little bit. I missed the mark right here, but don't care right now. It's going to be bolted on anyway. Hey, moving over here, this right here, the first time I put an LS motor in, I didn't know what that little vent hose was for right here, but it is actually a vent hose because the left and the right side or the port and the starboard side of this motor don't talk to each other as far as the air passage is concerned. So GM actually put one that runs from here to the other side over there. And this right here is an aggregate. It runs around here and got myself a nice little pretty stainless steel line. This is nothing more than a 10 millimeter uh, quick fitting for you get them in the Home Depots over here, which is the Bauhaus. Put them down here. Uh, obviously, this is roll-ons TIG welding. This is mine for the bung that I had to weld near the 10 millimeter. It worked pretty good. And again, this is roll-ons welding right here. And then this is my welding right here. If you can see that, I'll try to hold that still for a second. Um, what else can we show you on here? Went ahead and got a new hose on here. It looks kind of spiffy. And this right here will mirror exactly around here and then tie into this line and I just gotta take it back off. Put the tape around it and get a nice stainless steel cutoff wheel and cut that sucker off of there. What else I can show you is the intake four inch pipe out of aluminum is already on there. I had to piece some stuff together here from the old car which is hanging on the wall over there, you know that. That's the Plymouth that this motor came out of and it was in there for like a year and a half before the crash. And then I just had to get this one piece right here from Summit Racing. It's cheap, it's like $32, $33, uh, instead of using the plastic stuff. And then check this out, I just wanna show you to one more time. This is Roland type of welding right here. Nickels and dimes, ladies and gentlemen. That dude can weld aluminum, stainless steel, you name it, he'll weld it. And obviously this is the, the, the mass airflow sensor, and it's directional, so it goes this way, comes around the corner. Gotta have six inches over here, six inches over here, according to the instructions. And then I just basically exited or entered right here with a little K&N air filter. Uh, I got the shortest one they had, but I actually might be able to come out three, four, eh, two inches maybe, maybe three inches until this hood closes down. There's also a bar that comes across here someplace. Don't know where it's at, but I can also have the option of taking this off and taking this aluminum piece right here. I've got one more 90 degree bend and then turning it and facing it right down here if I have to. Um, 
the condenser is mounted already i went ahead and put my bolts down here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to replicate these nice little aluminum pieces of fab i made i'm going to countersink my brass screws make this exact same thing right here and bolt into right up here and then i'm going to take this thing off take a deep breath and i'm going to hack off all this holes right here at least for the top section because if you ask me it looks like something i got out of the hardware store uh not too cool looking or the other option is take a nice little piece of stainless steel and just basically lay it over the top right here which is what i might do because it'll be simpler and i don't take the chance of actually cutting in to this these right here if you can tell i got a little bit of a dimple right there i took this and had to actually bend it out just a little bit because you're supposed to get this radiator about i don't know an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch to this corner which i've done and then right here it just has to be basically mounted right there which isn't going to be a problem at all but anyway um it's monday don't know what the date is but we're in april about uh, towards the end of april uh, we're still in covid 19 corona situation um i'm telecommuting during the day doing normal work upstairs behind the vtc and telecons and our phones and our computers and our sharepoint sites and then as soon as that clock hits five o'clock I'm down here turning wrenches, and I actually come down here during lunch and turn a wrench too, so that's kind of nice. Uh, that's basically it. I had the heat going on because it was chilly willy this morning, and that's basically it. Uh, take care. Bye-bye. Also, das Coole an diese alte Hupen hier, und das ist von den 550er Chevy hier, uh, man kann die auseinanderbauen, und das ist alles rein mechanical. Also, man kann hier Einfach ein bisschen Karamba drauf machen. Hier kommt halt der Strom an, plus oder minus, das ist eigentlich egal bei den Dingen, aber ich habe es ja so, dass es minus ist die Erdung hier. Und dann ein bisschen einwirken lassen. Die Deckel kann man natürlich abmachen, schön lackieren. Und dann natürlich Batterie. Und dann kann man mal gucken, wie das Ding ein bisschen Krach macht hier. Also funktioniert. Man muss halt nur diese Schraube hier nehmen und man kann die ein bisschen adjusten und wirklich Viertelumdrehung macht das Ding, dass das hier vibriert. Chor geht hoch und runter und dann macht das Ding diese alte typische Ami Geräusch. Ich werde das beide anschließen. Hey, uh, just a quick little update here. I was actually to put this in video number 10, but um, got the neighbor kid to help me out, Moritz, and uh, got most of the wiring harness already run, so. I decided to actually go through, like I had planned, the little hole that was left right there in the top, on the top of the steering column. And it actually worked out pretty good, so I got all my wiring pulled. And just wanted to show you how simple this is. It's just arduous work. But check this out. Once you lay everything down, you can neatly tuck it in here. Like I said, it's all labeled right here. Basically, check this out. There it is. Click. There it went, and then right here is your mass airflow sensor. Click, and this is the one that you're not supposed to cut or anything uh, or modify it any kind of way because it's got a certain resistance in it. Because inside of here, the way this, uh, I guess most cars, is it'll take a little coil in there, a little bitty thread, and heat it up to like 600 degrees, and then how much air flows by here is actually how much power is kept to actually take that at 600 degrees, what the computer measures. That's just one of the ways to measure mass airflow or the flow of air. And watch this, click. Same thing on this side over here. I mean, I kind of already demoing this stuff right here, but like in here, this is your temperature sensor and little bung right there, click. And this one right down here, I got to crawl to the bottom of it, but this is your generator. This is basically your idiot light. It's that one little wire right there, your exciter. And then I'll run the big giant line from the back of the alternator to the big power. And that'll eventually end up on this red line over here. But a uh, quick look on the bottom of the car. Oh man. So you can see all my stuff is hanging down here. So this right here is a O2 sensor. This is for the uh, odd side of the engine. So odd numbers and this right here goes to the uh, looks like the oxygen sensor and that's the knock sensor I already got that one in there 
So it's just plug and play with those wiring harness right here. Vehicle speed sensor is right back here and I just got to get to the other side of the transmission along with the controller. So that's about it. Getting up now. Take care. Bye bye. Till number 10. This is number 9. I'm not going to say number 10 this thing is going to run but it's going to be close. Take care. Bye bye.